Fantex has a new series of cases called the XT series. Today we're taking a look at their brand new Fantex XT View. This is a very interesting case coming in at a very interesting price. What we're gonna do is our usual thing. I'm gonna pull this thing apart. We're gonna figure out what makes it tick and then we're gonna test the thermals. And finally, maybe, just maybe, I'll let you guys know if this new case from Fantex is worth your hard earned money. Let's do a uh, case review. Let's start off with panel removal. There's two captive thumb screws on the TG side panel to take the panel off. We'll just loosen those screws and then you'll want to slide the panel back and then lift it away from the case. Next up, we'll want to remove the rear panel. Same deal, it's got two captive thumb screws, one at the top, one at the bottom. This one's slightly different. Loosen the screws, just kidding, exactly the same, and slide it up to the side and pull the panel away from the case. Lastly, I would say that this is optional, but we can remove the front glass TG panel, which we'll do here just for the purposes of filming. There's four screws in total. There's two on the right hand side, if you're looking at it directly from the front, there's one at the bottom, one at the top. And then being careful, what we want to do is slide the panel to your right. So you wanna push it, slide it, and then lift it away from the case. Remember, after taking off the front panel, the case can become a little bit more flexible. Keep that in mind so you don't accidentally bend the case too much because you won't be able to put the front glass panel on. And that's pretty standard with these type of cases. Finally, we can remove the bottom panel that covers the PSU shroud. I would recommend removing this when building. It just makes it a little bit easier and gives us better cable management opportunities for later, as you'll see when we build. But there's a single screw that holds this panel in, loosen that screw and then slide the panel towards you. As for dust filters, there's a single magnetic dust filter on the top of the case, and there's also a dust filter for the power supply on the bottom of the case, which is pretty standard, so I'm not gonna show you, but yeah, the magnetic dust filter is quite easily removable. For hard disk and SSD support, you can install up to five 2.5 inch drives. You can do three on this back panel here, which is removable via a captive thumb screw and a little hinge mechanism, as well as in the basement, you can do two more, that are on this hard disk cage down here. As far as three and a half inch spinning rust drives, you can do up to two in this case. For power supplies, you're not really limited here. The maximum length that is supported here is 270 millimeters if you have the front cage installed. Otherwise, it's almost unlimited. Yay, unlimited power supply length. There's three pre-installed 120 millimeter addressable RGB PWM fans, and they can be daisy chained with both PWM and the addressable RGB as well. Usually in a case like this, for the side fans, you'd see a reverse pitch fan, not these ones. And I'll show you why a little bit later on in the video as to why I wouldn't do that. It makes more sense, trust me. You're gonna to wanna to listen to this. On the bottom, we can do up to three 120 millimeter fans and no radiator support at the bottom. I would not recommend that. On the side, you can do two 120 mil fans or a 240 millimeter liquid cooler, keeping in mind that you can only do the 240 mil radiator or liquid cooler if you vertically mounted your GPU because there's just no clearance otherwise. At the top, you can do up to a 360 millimeter radiator or liquid cooler or three 120 mil fans or two 140 mil fans. Lastly, on the rear, you can do either a 120 mil fan or a 140 mil fan. Motherboard support is where this begins to get interesting. This case supports ITX up to ATX. It also includes support for back connected motherboards like MSI's Project Zero boards or the ASUS BTF boards. However, the MATX rear connector boards from both MSI and ASUS will not work in this case because there's no cutouts along the middle of the motherboard tray where those back connectors would go. So I would say if you're doing a back connector build and you can actually get one of those boards, ATX only. For GPU support, it supports up to a maximum of 415 millimeters and it's quite easy to do vertical mounting in this case with 
most vertical GPU brackets would get questions quite often as to what vertical GPU bracket we use in certain builds, but the reality is they're all the same. So it doesn't really matter which one. Just find one that you like and it'll most likely work in any of the cases that you wanna use it in. That's the point of having vertical GPU brackets so they can work in anything. Case wiring here is all pretty standard. You've got your front panel audio, you've got your front panel connectors for all your lights and your switches. You've got your USB type A and USB type C connectors. For top panel connectivity, we've got a power button, a reset button, a headphone and microphone jack combined, USB type C, USB type A, and we've got buttons for the control for the included RGB controller. As mentioned, the case has an integrated RGB controller and it is SATA powered and has motherboard pass through for three pin five volt addressable RGB. Now the fans are connected to this controller out of the gate, but there's a diffused RGB strip along the bottom edge of the power supply shroud. And I'll give you a little bit of a demo so you can see some of the effects. Now the effects are coming from the built-in controller and they look pretty good. I'm not gonna lie, like I'm not really into RGB, but yeah, Fantex always has really nice RGB effects on their controllers. But that said, you can use your motherboard's RGB software and you can control it that way. That's everything I think you need to know about the Fantex XT View for now. Let's do our usual thing, let's do a build, we'll test the thermals, and then I'll let you guys know if this new case from Fantex is worth your hard-earned money. Spoiler alert, it's only 79 US dollars, so it could possibly be your next case. Let's get building. Comes around, yeah. comes around, comes
Alrighty, let's take a look at the thermals. What are you seeing on your screen right now is the thermals are excellent with this case. As usual, with the filter on and off, there is a little bit of variation, but that's pretty normal with cases like this with filters that are mounted on the top of the case. Also, this is a 7800X 3D. This CPU just does not get hot and a 360ml liquid cooler for a CPU like this is always gonna be a little bit overkill. You can cool this thing with, I'm not gonna say it, cause someone's gonna try it. So let's keep that one to ourselves. But yeah, the thermals are fairly decent. And as usual with our builds, we have little cards throughout the video when we're building the PC that show you what all the hardware is. There is one variation on this though. I had to change the RAM out because for some reason this board would not take 192 gigs of RAM. What a problem to have, right? Okay, what do I think about the Fantex XT? That's, why do they call it the XT, the Fantex XT view? That's kind of hard to say, anyway. What do I think about this thing? Well, the build quality is fairly good. Now, I would have thought that a case like this would be in their metallic gear range of cases, basically because of the build quality. Like it's not the worst, but it's definitely like not at the level of the Fantex NV5, but that's okay because you get a few extra things with this case that make it, maybe it will make it, more appealing to you. First of all, it comes with three included addressable RGB PWM fans, which is nice for the price. And I think I've probably mentioned the price already in jest somewhere through the video. Building in the case is extremely easy. The fact that you can remove the PSU shroud section is really nice. To be honest, I think I mentioned in the video me saying something like, oh, I'll remove that and show you to the cable management, but I, I didn't need to because it was just very, very easy to build in. If I have to make one comment, I would say it'd be nice if they had some Velcro tie downs in the back. I added my own, as you can see in this bit here with the cable management, it's fine. It's perfectly adequate and I had no problems with building or cable management in this case. So good job, Fantex. It's nice to see a new case series. Now we're gonna get the inevitable comments with people saying, oh, it's like a copy of some other case or whatever, who cares guys? A glass box is not the most original idea in the world. It's a computer case. And if you like it, you like it. That's just how it goes. It's really hard to reinvent the wheel when glass boxes have been around for a while. With saying that, some of the hardware choices for me were quite interesting. Like I used that ice board from Aorus, which I thought looked pretty good. I could have swapped the fans out in this to use ones with reverse pitch blades. And I didn't basically because a lot of the time when we review these cases, people will say, hey, we wanted to know what the thermals are like with the stock fans. So what I did is I added more of those stock fans into the case to show you what a typical build would look like. Because for me personally, with the default fan configuration that is in the case when you get it, I would always recommend flipping those side fans over. I mean, it, it depends on the orientation of your radiator and whatever you want to do in the case, but I would suggest flipping those side fans. I'm kind of wondering why Fantex didn't make a reverse pitch solution for this case out of the box, but it is what it is. I, I guess it's just to save money because they've already got these fans. They're probably like, someone made like a, an order of a million of them. They're like, hey, we need to get rid of them. So we'll just chuck them in the case, which is fine. It's fine. The case is nice. I think you guys are really going to like it too. I've got nothing really to complain about with this case because it does a lot of things more expensive cases do. Things like it's got support for vertical GPU brackets, which is nice. And I'm getting a little bit sidetracked here because I just had my morning coffee. Calm down, <laughs> I'm just like, whoa, this case is good. Like I actually, I don't hate the case at all. There is nothing bad to say about it. I think Fantex absolutely nailed it. And here's the best part about Fantex nailing this case, is the price. Because for the Fantex XT View, or at least the white version, it's going for 79 US dollars with three included fans. It's pretty good value. In fact, when the NV5 came out, I was like, 99 US dollars, this thing's amazing, but it had no fans. Buy this one instead. I'll be honest with you, yeah. Buy this one instead. Although it doesn't have things like GPU support bracket and all that stuff, you can add your own. A lot of GPUs come with that stuff as well. So, you know, I think this is pretty great value, but I do need to add something and I hope Fantex listens to me 
when I say this and takes this with constructive criticism, I really like your RGB controllers. They have really good effects. I like that we don't have to use software, but please allow us to change the brightness of the RGB. Right, that's the only thing. I mean, there's probably a way to do it and I'm probably a big idiot who's putting my foot right in my mouth first thing in the morning, but to make it more apparent if there is a way of doing it because I didn't read the manual, <laughs> yeah. Brightness control is something that is definitely needed because I'm being blinded right now from the side of my eye. It's very, very bright. And look at the pink on the side of my face. I love pink on my face, but like it's a bit bright. Anyways, guys, if you like the Fantex XT view, let us know in the comments what you think about it. There's a bunch of other XT cases that they've just announced and launched as well. One's called the XT Pro and the XT Pro Ultra. We were supposed to have the Pro Ultra in white, and then we we're gonna do like a double review with this one in black, but the uh, it got mixed up somewhere along the line. So yeah, this one arrived and the other one didn't arrive, which is fine. I'm a bit bummed because you know how much I love doing double reviews for you guys. That's like my whole jam. All right, ladies and gents, like the video, subscribe. Please subscribe, help us out here, guys. The channel's dying, we need you to help revive it. Get the, uh, what are they called? The, the things that they shock the chests on? The, 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 the defibrillator. And let's defibrillate the channel. Uh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go play Final Fantasy. Watch one of the videos right here. Also, if you got to this part of the video, let us know. Uh, a lot of people don't get to this part of the video and we'd really appreciate if you guys hung around right till the end. In fact, Claire, I t asked people like, there's no way you're gonna stay around to the end of the video because you won't, you just won't. You, you yeah. won't. You're scared, all right? You just won't stay around to this part of the video and if you do, comment. But most of you are scared and you won't comment. Or maybe we'll get 100 comments from people saying that they stay to this part of the video. I don't know how your brains work, people. I don't know how the algorithm works. I don't know why YouTube hates us, but it is what it is. Maybe they don't like the fact that, like, I try to be funny. Yeah, because you're not funny. Because <laughs> I'm not, I'm just not funny. There's a lot of weird stuff that goes on in this coconut of mine. Yeah.